understanding of the helium atom right now is that the wave function for that helium atom, even though we can't solve for it exactly, looks something uh, fairly much like uh, the product of two one electron wave functions, this Hartree product between something that is very close to a, a 1s wave function for electron one and a 1s wave function for electron two. Again, that's not exactly right, but it's uh, a reasonable approximation. And this explains why, ever since general chemistry, you've been able to say that the electron configuration for a helium atom is 1s2, which means the two electrons in the helium atom both occupy a 1s orbital. Quantum mechanically, that's just, uh, this is what we mean by that statement. So we now see that that's not exactly right, but it's approximately true. It's reasonable to think that that's what would happen because, as we've seen, the energy of the 2s orbital is significantly higher, much many, many kT higher than the 1s orbital. So when we put the second electron, it's going to also occupy the 1s orbital because occupying the 2s orbital is uh, far too high in energy to have any reasonable probability. So if we move on now to atoms beyond helium and talk about lithium, um, an atom with three electrons, based only on what we've seen so far, we might expect this electron configuration, right? The 1s orbital is still much lower than the 2s orbital, so the third electron is going to occupy the 1s orbital as well. But of course, if you pass general chemistry, you know that's not the electron configuration of a helium atom. Instead, you'll tell me that the electron configuration is 1s2, 2s1. So we could write down what the wave function would look like. We might expect, based on this electron configuration, to have a, a 1s wave function for the, the first and second electrons and a 2s wave function for the third electron. That's what the electron configuration tells us. But it raises the question, why do we not have a, an electron configuration that looks like 1s3? You, you've learned rules like the Aufbau principle and Hund's rule that tell you to fill from the bottom up and not put two, more than two electrons into an s orbital. But why is that the case? Turns out the reason that will explain why we don't put more than two electrons into an s orbital is the spin of the electron. To understand what we mean when we talk about spin of an electron, uh, spin is just another quantum number, just like the n and l and m quantum numbers for the hydrogen atom uh, electrons that we've talked about so far. So just to summarize, we've talked about n and l and m, n being the principal quantum number, l being the angular momentum quantum number, and uh, m uh, being the magnetic quantum number. Turns out there's a fourth quantum number that we haven't talked about so far. When we give a variable name to that, we're going to call that m sub s, and that's the spin quantum number. So what we mean by spin of an electron, uh, it's another flavor of angular momentum. We call this the intrinsic angular momentum of the electron. So let me explain what that means. So when we talk about the angular momentum, remember the, the thing that d differentiates an electron in L equals 0 or L equals 1 or L equals 2 orbital is, is whether it's in a spherical orbital or a dumbbell-shaped orbital or a cloverleaf D uh, orbital. And those differ in the angular momentum of the electron itself uh, as it regards the nucleus. So as the electron itself has some kinetic energy around the nucleus, uh, it has differing amounts of angular momentum. The, the more that wave function oscillates in space, the, the higher the angular momentum it has. So that's the angular momentum of the electron with respect to the nucleus itself. The electron itself, uh, however, also has some angular momentum all by itself. So not only does it have some angular momentum uh, in space around the nucleus, but it has some angular momentum itself. We call that spin because it's analogous to an object uh, that is spinning. So if we have, uh, let's say the Earth is orbiting the Sun, it has some angular momentum as it orbits the Sun, but the Earth itself can also be spinning on its own axis. So it has an intrinsic angular momentum of its own, and it has some angular momentum as it orbits another body. So neither of those is a perfect analogy for what these, 
angular momentum of the electron and the intrinsic angular momentum are, but they're good analogies. So the electron behaves as if it has um, some intrinsic angular momentum, and so we call that spin, even though from a, a subatomic point of view, there's no smaller parts inside the electron that are orbiting within themselves, so we can't genuinely say the electron is spinning, so this is only an analogy. Uh, but we do, do know that the electron has some intrinsic angular momentum itself at its location in space. And that's the property that we call spin. And importantly for an electron, we can say in atomic units that the value of the spin can either be plus one half or minus one half. We call that uh, a spin up electron or a spin down electron. So when, when an electron is spin up, we normally say it has a spin of one half, and we uh, say it's spin down when it has a spin of, of negative one half. I'll also point out that the origin of these first three quantum numbers, n and l and m, we've seen where they came from in, in a fair amount of detail when we solved uh, Schrodinger's equation for the hydrogen atom. We discovered that there were certain uh, uh, families of solutions, certain values of these integer quantum numbers uh, that arose naturally from solving Schrodinger's equation. I've just told you that electrons have spin, and just like n and l and m can only have certain integer values, I've told you that the spin can only have these two half integer values. We haven't derived where those come from. Turns out when you solve the relativistic version of the Schrodinger equation, if we introduce relativity into the Schrodinger equation, um, and solve that equation, that's, the, uh, that's where the origin of spin comes. And that's getting a little far afield from physical chemistry. It's more in the domain of physics. So we'll just si simply say that we know, both from experiment and from solving the relativistic version of Schrodinger's equation, that uh, electrons have this spin. So the last thing to discuss about spin, uh, so that we can begin to understand why lithium has the properties it does, the electron configuration that it does, is that when I write down a wave function, until now, I've written a wave function as a property of spatial coordinates. A one electron wave function will depend on the xyz, or the r theta phi coordinates of that electron. A two electron wave function will depend on the r theta phi for each of the two electrons in it. When we need to talk about spin, we need to add a fourth coordinate. So these three uh, quantum numbers arise from the three coordinates x, y, and z, or r theta and phi. This fourth quantum number arises when we consider a fourth coordinate, which is uh, the, the spin coordinate. So. Uh, if we're writing down a fully uh, a full spin wave function, we need to consider both the xyz coordinate as well as the spin coordinate. And we won't do that too often, but when we do, we'll typically break that into a product of one term that describes the spatial dependence of the wave function and a second term which describes the spin uh, coordinates of the wave function. So. Uh, Sigma here is the spin coordinate of the wave function, and alpha is the, the spin portion of the wave function itself. And all we will do to differentiate between a spin up and a spin down wave function is we will say when the electron is in the spin up state with a spin of plus one half, then the spin portion of the wave function is this function we'll just call alpha. And when it's in a spin down state, then we'll call that spin portion of the wave function beta. So again, when we need to, to include the, the features of the spin of the electron, we'll just label the spin functions alpha and beta to distinguish between spin up and spin down. And we won't bother writing down the mathematics of, of what those functions look like. <coughs>